So it's Kayon. Uh, we do, yeah, it's all right. We do uh, sales and marketing applications. So we've been doing this for a really long time. Like, I, I just looked up Unity. has been around since 2004. We're, we're like been there eight years before that. So um, we have been doing stuff in 3D to help salespeople explain products to their customers. And this is actually a little bit uh, simpler than our usual products, which might be a big switch that we made for Cisco or a big server that we made for Hewitt Packard or a, a mainframe for IBM, something like that. But Georgia Pacific is another one of our customers. They're a paper products company, and it's kind of like the ink uh, business with printers, right? They, they, they also make the gadgets that use the consumables. So um, I'm just going to jump straight into an augmented reality demo. So here we have an existing product that we had, right? This, this catalog, it's got a whole bunch of different products in it. And they, the salesperson can walk into a sales engagement. They can demonstrate the product. They can show off the different features, walk through the animations. We're going to hang a paper towel dispenser on the A in ARIA. <laughs> All right. So um, you can imagine going into a sales situation where you want to demonstrate the product, put it into context, and be able to interact with it in the physical space. I get right up close to it. I can still run all the animations. Let's uh, show you how to take the batteries out of this thing. It's mounted on the wall. So it opens up and, right? I can walk right up real close, see what's going on. Oh, I see where they go. Oh. You see the other battery going in, closes right up. So it's a practical application, right? It's the idea is, to be able to let the customer in the sales engagement get more of a, an emotional connection to the product, to feel like they actually saw that product, they saw it in context. Um, give you another example. Uh, how about um, this company called Hexagon? Um, they make uh, uh, positioning uh, sensors that let you figure out what's around you and what things are. And again, no, this is pretty risky. This is a pretty boring floor. So I don't know if we're going to be able to see anything on it. But yeah, I see some red dots. That's a good sign. What we're waiting for is for ARKit to get enough of a sense that it can tell me how far away things are. Because it's critical in these situations, although this is just a little tiny version of the car, you can imagine that you want things to be um, you know, life size, right? So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him a little smaller just so we can see him well. And then, again, we can run you know, an animation that, that demonstrates the features, puts that thing in context, right? We can walk around and see how does Hexagon, um, how do their products integrate with an automobile and you know, where, where, where things go and, and, and all of that. So we've been doing this for a while. And we have on the order of, um, I don't know, 50 applications out there in the App Store, uh, Apple App Store, Google Play Store. Um, and what we're finding is that actually getting salespeople to start using this as part of their sales pro process is, is a real challenge. Um, it's, it, it's, it's part of this whole digital transformation problem, right? So it's what we've been doing for a long time with this putting something in 3D on a, on a screen so that they can walk in with their entire product catalog and have access to all the different, the different applications, the different products, what those products do. That's already a stretch. To, to say, we're not going to sell with brochures anymore. We're not going to have a trunk full of, of stuff. We're going to be using digital technology to actually close these deals and to convince you that you don't actually need to see the real product because the real product is right here. And I can show you everything about the product and how it works. That's already a big change for salespeople. And now to say, and now we're going to do it in augmented reality, um, it's just starting. We've had these applications out for about 
over a year. It's been over a year, basically since ARKit became um, available on iOS. Uh, ARCore followed shortly thereafter. And we added these, these AR buttons. And the, uh, the usage has been very, very low. So we have the applications out there because they're being used for other things. AR is a feature, but the actual usage of that feature, not that, not that much yet. And we're, we're watching it. Um, I can say the same thing, actually, about um, virtual reality. The, uh, our applications work in uh, web VR. So if you happen to have a mixed reality headset, you go to uh, Georgia Pacific's website, you can view these things in 3D. You can put on your mixed reality headset, click the button, and you're in the room with the thing, right, in virtual reality. And you can see all the animations, and you can see very little adoption. So um, it's interesting. We're there. We're ready. Uh, I think it's going to be a while. And I think it's probably going to happen once it's more commonplace in the consumer space and people are more accustomed to these features and they understand how to use them, maybe then it will be more natural to use it in the sales space. So we're there. We're ready. Our applications work. Um, now we're just waiting for uh, adoption at the, uh, at the customer side. So. so Great. Questions. We do have time. Question, yes. This gentleman here. I'll give you, let me give you a live mic, so share it with the room. Um, great presentation. This is the first time I'm hearing someone say that, you know, it, that there's, the adoption is slow. Everybody talks all the positive stuff, but this is real practical information, so that, that's great. Um, do you have any data on, is this improving and how fast? I mean, what is your, like, is it going to take months, years? And well, what's the metric? If they do use it, how, mu how fast, uh, you know, is, it, is, it, is, is yeah. there some data out there? That what I often tell my, our customers, our customers ask us for analytics, right? All, we, we put these applications out. They can see how they're being used. And they say, yeah, I want analytics. And I say, you can't do analysis when you have uh, data points with numbers like five, right? The, the, the usage is so low that, that the noise in people experimenting with things is going to overwhelm it. I mean, we have seen some huge usage, but it's been driven by uh, the customers deciding to use this technology as a showpiece. So for example, a year ago, um, uh, this before AR Core, we were on um, uh, Tango devices. Right? You remember Tango? There was a, that giant phone, right? So you had the giant Tango phone, and you're walking around. Cisco had a, uh, did a trade show. They had a whole bunch of equipment in the booth, and they had a pedestal with nothing on it. And, and, and you could walk around with the Tango phone and point it at and see whatever switch you wanted sitting on that pedestal, and a bunch of people walking around. It was very successful. Thousands of views of AR on one day, right? But then the next day, there's no views of AR again, even though if people had those phones, they could have been doing that anywhere. Yeah. Um, so it's picking up a little, I suppose, but it's really hard for me to say that quantitatively because the numbers we're talking about are so small. So other, other questions? Other questions from anybody? Yes, this lady here. Great presentation. Thank you so much. Um, are you considering or trying to implement this into a web-based AR application? I'd love to. Um, yeah, we, we, for VR, we went web VR from the beginning uh, because at the... When we started doing it, Oculus, you could use it through a special build of Chromium. And then Mixed Reality uh, integrated with Edge, and it was actually a commercial product that people, regular people could use. You didn't have to set up a bunch of weird stuff. Um, AR on the web is not really actually available. The, the closest thing you can get to that right now is using the Quick Look stuff that Apple's done. But that's not really the web. That's Safari on an iPad. And Quick Look can't do any of those things. Because without the animation and without being able to attach more information, you're getting no value from a sales standpoint, right? That you, you don't want them to just look at your product. You want them to understand it and to feel like, oh, this, this product's going to meet my needs. So it needs to be a lot more than just, I can walk around this little statue. That's not a feature, right? The feature is, I can actually open this thing up and, and, and learn about it and engage with it. The second AR is available in a browser, we're going to support it um, because, you know, there's <clears throat> There's no reason it shouldn't be. We you know, do everything on GL. We can do everything on GL, so that'll work. But well, Joshua, thank you very much. Not yep. to catch up, but we. That's right. <laughs>